He is indeed. He's just come up onto a little fallen log and he is posing perfectly. And he's busy scratching, getting those claws nice and sharp, generally being a little hooligan. And now back into the long grass we go. So every now and then he's giving us these beautiful visuals where he jumps up on. Seems to be moving quite quickly through the grass and it's been interesting to watch him because Hosanna is probably one of the most relaxed leopards that I've dealt with as a small young male. And generally young males can be quite shy. But he's, to this morning, seems a little bit sort of wary. He's walking quite quickly away from the vehicle when it starts. And then he starts to kind of calm down once it follows him for a little bit. But he's showing sort of more and more that he's aware of the fact that he's now under sort of threat, that mom is not around. You can see that he's a little bit more wary of what's going on around him. And that's probably because of that it's the incident he had with Tingana. He knows now that Tingana is starting to see him in a bit of a different light. It's no longer sort of this male leopard that's tolerant of his presence. He's now getting into a situation where Tingana is starting to see him as more of a threat. And so that's why he'll be a little bit more cautious about what's going on and keep his distance from certain things like the vehicles, um, just in case they come out. Now I'm going to try and see if we can't find a better place because he's gone behind a tree there, as you can see. And let's just try to see if we can't position ourselves slightly better. But that was very nice of him to go on this big fallen log here. It was perfect, perfect place with that morning sunshine on his golden coat. So, so special. Now I'm hoping, because we are moving slowly in a southeasterly direction, it would be nice if he joins up with Shongile. I'm just going to try and negotiate this big thicket. So you can see he's a little bit kind of wary. He keeps trotting off a little bit as we get sort of alongside him, which means he's kind of a little bit nervous of the car at this stage. I don't want to push him too much. I'm just going to give him a bit of space and see where he goes to. He's just gone behind this little tree area here. There you can see him through the thicket. I wonder where he's going to head from here. I was hoping that he was going to head a little bit more sort of east of where we are and maybe try and see if he finds little Shongile. It would be nice to see the two of them together again. I don't think he actually knows where he wants to go. He's kind of trotting about everywhere and he's looking into all the trees and I think he's going to settle there. So let's try and see if we can't get ourselves into a place where we can actually see him. So Kim, you're wondering if Hosanna would be making big kills yet? Well, yes indeed, he killed an Impala a few days ago, close to Voyotela camp, and then he's also, we know, it's killed one or two Impalas in Little Gauri, so he's made quite a number of kills at this stage, and so he's just fine, he'll be making quite large kills. I believe the one kill that he made in Little Gauri was an adult male Impala, so that's very, very good for him. And if he's already started to get this technique where he's catching impalas, he's going to be just fine. So he's big and strong enough now to pull down those sort of sized animals in comparison to Shongila, who's still a little bit smaller. She struggles a bit to be able to pull down something of that size. So he is just fine. And you can see he looks in perfect condition. He's been without his mom now for it's over two months, and yet he's still perfect. He's got healthy body mass he's not in any way skinny you can see his neck is growing so he's doing just fine like I say he's taken to this single life and looking after himself like a duck to water and he's done really really well so it's good to see that his mom obviously taught him very well and yeah watch are you wondering how much longer until he mates well that's dependent on where he ends up and how life goes for Hosanna if, if he gets pushed out of this area and ends up being a nomadic male for a while he can go until even six seven years old before he's able to mate um, but if we look at sort of quarantine and Kunyuma and and Shivambalana they all sort of managed to get a territory fairly young and we're already mating by about four and a half five years so he's still got quite a while to go you must remember that Hosanna now is only about I think he's about just over 16 months 17 months I forget where we are now we're in May so 17 months um, so he's still a young male he's still got probably about two years to go before he's actually big enough to start challenging and take over any mating rights so it's not going to be any time soon but we will see where he ends up and how he ends up 
going and whether or not he can find himself a territory in this area that he is able to settle quite quickly or if he's going to have to be quite nomadic and end up quite far away. Now we're going to try and see if I can't reposition so we can see his face without all these big grass stalks. And while we do that, I believe James has got something else that is glistening in the sunshine that he would like to show you. Well, we haven't seen him get anywhere near anything just yet. He is definitely watching and listening and looking around, but so far no luck for little Osana. He's got no meal to show for anything. He's been chased around by a few birds, and you can hear the rollers are squeaking at him, and a few Franklins have shouted at him, but other than that, he's been... and now the Hornbills are also going. But other than that, he's just been sort of very circumspect, and he's been walking around and listening and looking and smelling and just trying to kind of see what's going on around him. He hasn't really bumped into anything of substance, and so I'm sure as time goes and he starts to find what he's looking for, if he sees maybe some impalas or a dico or something like that, then he will definitely start going into a lot more of a hunting mode. Earlier he was trying to stalk some Franklins, but got hopelessly nowhere near them. They were far, and they saw him, and lots of squawking and squeaking as he bounded after them, but really had no shot. But you can see how difficult they can be to find. Look at that camouflage there. Absolutely amazing. So Douglas, you're wondering how good a leopard's eyesight is. Well, it's very good. It's much like us. They have binocular vision, so the eyes are in the front of the head, and they have very large eyes, so they're able to pull in a lot of light, which means that they see very, very well at night, and their eyesight is definitely better than what ours is. So they don't see in nearly the same spectrum of colors, though, because they've sacrificed cells in their eyes to be able to see better at night. So we have two types of cells in our eyes. We have rods and cones, and cones are the color cells, so those are the cells that will pick up color, and the rods are light cells, and so as these animals move, well, these leopards and us, and we have sort of balances of the two. With leopards and lions, they tend to have very, very, very few cone cells, and that ends up with them being able to see much better at night, but not so well, um, well, not so well in terms of color. Now we're going to try and see if we can't find a better place to park. As you can see, it's quite dense and thick behind me here. And while we do that, let's go and see what James is up to with some rather large aquatic animals. There he is. And he's still now facing south of us. And I'm sure that's because there were impalas that were alarm calling just to the south of us. And we had Shungile's tracks a little bit earlier right where we are now. So I wonder if she's not around here as well. Wouldn't it be fantastic to see the two of them come together? But isn't that beautiful? In amongst the long grass of the termite mound, he just looks so elegant up there. You can see he's watching the comings and goings of some of the other vehicles and just seeing what's happening. Now I'm quite surprised. He walked straight past a male impala. He didn't even blink at it. I don't know if he spotted it, but he seems to be more enthralled with these impalas that were alarm calling south of us. So I wonder if he knows that there's maybe something else a foot and maybe another leopard is close by and in this area and that's why he's kind of checking around and seeing and facing in that direction. You can see his ears are moving around quite a bit. He's trying to work out exactly what's going on and whether or not it would be safe for him to head in that area. Now like I say the tracks that I did have were for a female leopard which would have been pretty much I'm sure for Shungile. They were small tracks so I'm sure it's his sister that's been causing the noise to be made. Isn't he beautiful? Up on his mound. You are looking very regal, my boy. You're starting to grow and fit into those ears and paws and body. And I was looking at his tracks just now when we were crossing the road because often with tracks and tracking, we find tracks really regularly and it's difficult to know exactly who it is unless you can actually see them putting their foot down and you then look at the track quite carefully. And he was just seeing how big his foot actually is. It's quite amazing. It's not too far behind Tingana these days. He still doesn't quite have the same size foot, but he's getting there. It's, it's definitely gotten much bigger, and his tracks do now resemble a male leopard rather than a sort of big female. So Kirk, he's in Tingana's territory. That's where he moves around. Tingana was was what we th well we think fathered these cubs, and um, so he moves around within that territory because when he was a tiny cub, 
This would have been where Karula hung around and Tingana would have made sure that he protected this area so that these cubs would be protected. So that's where he is now. Um, we do sometimes find that Mvula will move around in these areas, but he's no longer really a territorial male. He's now nomadic, so it's more Tingana's territory than anything else. And he hasn't, Hosanna hasn't drifted outside of that yet. We've only really seen him around these sort of natal areas where he was born. He hasn't started making any sort of progress and moving out and around and into other areas and that's very very important that he doesn't because at the age that he is he can't defend himself against a really big male he doesn't have the techniques he doesn't have the experience he also just doesn't have the size and so he needs to stay in this area where kind of Tingana knows him and won't see him as too much of a threat just yet but will still sort of provide some sort of protection by being able to push um, other um, leopards away and, and Hosanna can then fly under the radar and that's why you'll find that he won't vocalize he won't scent mark if he does urinate it will just be in a bush somewhere he's not going to actually use his back legs and, and actually scrape and urinate like that um, so he's going to try and fly under the radar as much as possible until he gets a little bit late uh, older until he gets to about four or five years old and that's when he'll start to then actually push for dominance and mating but isn't that beautiful with all the grass Absolutely amazing. So Donna, you're wondering if he's always had that little notch in the top of his ear. Well, Donna, I'm actually not sure. I was just looking at that myself and wondering the same thing. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of viewers out there that will definitely know. So if you do know, hashtag Safari Live, and you can help us out and let us know if Hassan has always had his little notch in his left ear. And it's... It's interesting because it doesn't look like a cut or anything like that. It just looks like the shape of the ear is slightly different on the edge there. You can see it looks like there's a little piece missing out that's quite old. It hasn't, that's definitely healed. So, yes, it must have been there for a while. It's definitely not something that's very new. But I've actually never noticed it before. I was just looking at the exact same thing in that shot and wondering whether or not that notch is new or not. But now that I can see with the ear kind of moving towards us, you can see there's no sort of fresh sign of blood or scabbing. So I would imagine that's quite an old nick and has been there for quite some time. But you can see how he's watching around. From where he is now, he's got the perfect sort of vantage point to see what's going on. He's on a very tall termite mound, and from up there, he'll be able to watch over this area and to see if there's any sign of potential prey animals or any other leopards that could be moving around and you can see now he's going back down and I wonder if he hasn't spotted that male impala that I was referring to earlier I think maybe he missed it because he's looking in the same direction where that male impala was and is now heading back the way he came so I wonder if he's not going to maybe try and head in that direction although it seems like he's now changed again and going around the side of the mount might be a bit hot on top there the sun has come out and it is starting to get a little bit warm so maybe he's going to try and see if he can't find some shade so I think what we'll try to do is try and just see if we can't move and find ourselves a better position I'm just trying to see which way he goes because I can see some grass moving oh he's back on top of his mount what are you doing Hosanna? And maybe he just decided to go on a walkabout of the mound and just explore this sort of castle that he's on He's back exactly where he started again. I wonder if he wasn't trying to find a place to lie down in the shade and there just wasn't a comfy spot down further down and he's now going to find somewhere else to lie and show us his bum. So I'm going to just move so that we can actually see something other than his spotted little tail. Now, while we try and reposition and get ourselves into a more friendly place, I believe Jamie's still out and about and on foot and looking around for all the small things. So let's go see where she is and what she's doing. Ela might be on her way back this way and maybe that's why he's lying um, at on top of this mound and just watching what's going on. Maybe trying to see whether this is indeed his sister or maybe a different leopard that could be approaching. So he's found himself in the perfect place. Now... Jamie's saying she's going to be tracking elephants. Well, she was the elephant whisperer yesterday, so I'm hoping that she will be able to find them. I saw quite fresh tracks around Trias Dam area as well, heading sort of northwards. So maybe she, those are the same tracks that she's on, and she'll have some luck finding them. But isn't that beautiful? 
So you can see he's starting to be, get a little bit sleepy now. His eyes are starting to close and it's this typical sort of winter phase that we go through with, with cats. They often are like this. They move around in the early hours of the morning and then as that sun starts to get warm, they tend to lie and just kind of absorb a bit of warmth and sunshine before they then start finding some shade. And you'll often find the cats on top of mounds like this just watching. But he is so, so beautiful. He's got the most amazing eyes and face. So, Megan, this is a question that I've been asked many times um, throughout my guiding career, and it's whether or not Hosanna or an individual leopard would recognize our voices or our smells. Well, I, I would imagine that they definitely recognize some of the sounds that we make. I don't know if they recognize, recognize each individual as a sort of different entity, but I would imagine that with the, the sense of hearing that they have, that they would be able to differentiate between all of our voices and know that certain voices are certain individuals. But the thing is, is that if you look at Hosanna, the first time I ever saw him, he would never have known who I was, but yet his sort of demeanor was still the same. So he didn't react any differently to me as he would to, well, me the first time as he does to me now after spending quite a bit of time with him. So I think they do recognize the sort of smells and, and the sounds associated with vehicles, but whether they differentiate that from each individual is debatable. It's, it's possible, and, and I, given that they, their senses are so good, I would imagine that they can but they seem to not show too many different reactions to different people. Um, you know, I've watched Hosanna and I've seen now three different vehicles coming in and his behavior hasn't really changed across those three different vehicles and it's not like he's drifted closer to any sort of in particular person. So I would imagine that they can kind of differentiate but they don't sort of apply a different behavior around that unless somebody's done something really negative to them. So if let's say I had to drive now up into the mound and chase him and do all of those kind of things then I think over time he would be able to recognize my sort of voice and the sound of Jigger and he would know that that's something he needs to be scared of but nowadays you know so in his lifetime he's been treated with respect by multiple guides and so he's pretty relaxed with vehicles and the sounds of most of the voices that he hears. It's interesting though because if we sort of apply it to other animals there used to be a rhino in this area called Stompy and oh not Stompy sorry Skewhorn and he used to have a particular hatred for one guide in, and nobody knew why and this guide I asked him did you ever have a sort of time where you chased him or anything like that and he said no and but this time every single time that guide would come down the road and his voice would be heard that Rhino would come charging straight towards him and try and horn his vehicle and with all the other guides he was very relaxed you would be able to spend lots of time but with that particular guide, he used to get such trouble from that individual. So there must be a case of these animals recognizing something in us and our voices and knowing that that was a particularly sort of person that maybe in some stage had chased that rhino or had done something to cause that response. So I think they're a lot more intelligent than we give them credit for. So I would imagine that they do recognize us, but whether or not they apply a different behavior is still very much a debatable situation.